The Catholic Legal Immigration Network, otherwise known in the field as CLINIC, um, is comprised of a network of over 200 agencies. So we really are a network agency serving our membership comprised of Catholic and non-Catholic organizations that are charitable programs who, which are serving uh, low-income immigrants um, in our communities. And in total, they serve over 600,000 immigrants per year. So they serve a very vulnerable population, often people without money, other victims uh, of various crimes and vulnerable populations, such as asylum seekers and victims of trafficking. So the work that they do is, is essential. And our job is to support them so that they can be strong programs. They can learn how to manage their resources and become sustainable. They can have support in the legal area. So in substantive immigration law, they will have access to training, mentoring, as well as technical assistance. We also provide them assistance in the area of advocacy. Often when you're practicing in a charitable program, you don't have time to engage in advocacy, so we do it on their behalf. We have a national perspective because of them. So we gather all the issues and we take them to the relevant agencies, hopefully for a resolution. And we are very effective in representing our network before U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services, before the Office for Refugee Resettlement, the Executive Office for Immigration Review, and other agencies. The strength of our program lies in the fact that we can place a child with a pro bono attorney and then place that attorney with a mentoring attorney here at clinic that can be available to serve that pro bono attorney, to nurture their professional development, and most importantly, to be able to pick up the phone or answer an email when that person needs assistance in, in the direction of the case, in the strategy of the case, and needs someone to help them understand legal terms, legal um, arguments that can be made, and, and at the end, really have a partner that you can reach out to in, in considering all forms of relief available to this child. No, it's often um, an unknown fact that immigrants do not have the right to government appointed counsel while first facing deportation proceedings. And that includes everyone appearing before an immigration judge in an administrative proceedings. That includes detained individuals, people who are applying for asylum, it includes children, it includes everyone. Um, those persons who are not mentally competent to stand uh, before an immigration judge are not eligible either for government appointed counsel. So it is really important for those attorneys who are out there considering doing pro bono work in immigration court to know that because it, it further enhances uh, the, 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 the point that you will make such a big difference by accepting a case in immigration court. You will be taking us one step further in our plight for having everyone facing an immigration judge have access to counsel. Our children come from many places. Many of them come from Central America, but we have seen children also from South America, from the Caribbean, and some African countries in East Asia. So we do have um, children in our program that, that come from all over the world. Some of them come from countries where they have faced uh, turmoil, disaster, um, that includes natural disasters, war and, and other conditions in which they find themselves at, at risk of being killed. Others have faced persecution. Others have been the victims of trafficking. Others simply come because they want to be reunited with a mother or a father or a relative because they have no one to care for them at home. So they come from many different situations. Many of them are fleeing violence from street gangs and persecution and, and other terrible acts inflicted upon them and their families because of um, gang, uh, street gangs trying to recruit them, um, especially in Central America. I can tell you about one teenager who came from Honduras who was very forcibly recruited by criminal street gangs in his country. And that recruitment turned into great violence inflicted upon his brothers. In fact, one of them was murdered. He himself was attacked and severely injured by the criminal street gangs that tried to recruit him. So his only option to stay alive was to come to the United States, to come here and enter illegally and hopefully find some safety, find a safe haven here in the United States. When you accept a pro bono case, especially a case involving a child in deportation proceedings, you allow yourself to represent someone, but, but that relationship begins and is nurtured from a, from a different place, a different perspective. It, it opens the door to a vulnerable 
the vulnerable population that you wouldn't otherwise serve because these are people who would not probably come into your office. You would not learn about their plight. You will not learn about the circumstances that drive them to come across a, you know, a desert by themselves, often being abused by smugglers. You wouldn't otherwise learn about all these other important issues that are out there and that are impacting children, especially girls, are impacting uh, adults that you don't know about. So you expose yourself, you open the doors to learning um, about issues that you wouldn't otherwise learn in your ordinary course of your law practice. So you learn, you grow in your profession, you become a better advocate for your other clients, and you really let go of the constraints of that business relationship with your client. You really find yourself often you know, doing more things for your clients than you would if you were otherwise constrained by that business relationship, looking out for other resources to serve their, their, their needs, their physical needs, their temporal needs, their spiritual needs, and that comes naturally and organically when you develop a relationship, especially with a child in deportation proceedings.